All right, welcome back to the channel. So if this is your first time watching, this here is a 1950 Cat D4 that's kind of spread out all over my shop here. And the goal of this video is to give the undercarriage a pretty thorough once over, see what's wrong with it and what I need to replace. First thing we gotta do though, you see I got all these nice shop lights up here. These grousers act as like a perfect shade and I cannot see anything on here. So I'm gonna make some lights up on the side here so I can actually see what I'm doing. Yes, I'm using a cutting tip for this because I'm just way too lazy to change to the correct one. All right, I made like four of those things. Let's see how it works. Oh, so much nicer. So uh, if you want the Harbor Freight shop light that has like the two lights on the top and you can swivel it around and raise it up and down that's led that thing is 90 dollars and i don't know about you guys i got three kids to feed so i all four of these i made for i think less than that these are very cheap lights uh, i think they're like uh, 5000 or 4500 lumen led lights and that's just some spare rebar i had before we get into the nitty gritty on this, let's just do a quick walk around and some things I've observed uh, over the last few months I've been working on it. So just looking at differences between this side and the other side. First off, you have this huge plate right here. And if you look on the other side, it looks like most likely there was a crack here. So they welded in the crack and then they put that plate on. That's fine, you can leave that, no big deal. One thing I, I see that I don't like is on these covers on the bottom right here, they have welded those to the uh, to the plate or to the uh, frame rail here. So maybe that's I don't know why they would do that. Maybe there's an issue with them, you know, coming apart if they hit something. But they are welded in. I don't know yet if I have to take them off. I guess we'll find out by the end of this video. I might not have to, and you'll see why. Okay, over on this side, it's a little more concerning. We have this piece of angle iron welded between, this is the blade frame, or whatever you would call it, the support frame for the blade to the track frame. Uh, if I had a guess, I would say that they ran into something that didn't move and it just ripped something out. The welding on it is about as good as you'd see this side of a junior high shop class. So, I mean, yikes a little bit. And then over here, so this is like the other support for the blade. So there's a uh, like a shim shoved in here and then they have this bolt pushed through. So I'm guessing the spacing between here is just a little bit too wide for this. Whatever damage they did caused that. You can compare it to this side over here, which does not have that. Uh, you know, there's also some like, like these bolts are missing in there. A couple bolts in there. Probably can put those in. One other thing to support this theory here is if you look at the gap between the blade frame and the, and the uh, grouser here, it's like pretty straight all the way back. But you come over to here and it's just bent quite a bit that way out. So that kind of supports the idea that they were pushing something, probably going way too fast, and they hit something, like they hit an immovable object and it just torqued that whole frame out. And I guess that's the repair that they came up with. So this, this repair looks really bad, but it actually might be functional. And I'm not going to know that till I use it. So I think I should just leave it as is for now, get the machine back together. And uh, if it is a problem, like the machine's not tracking straight or the blade's all weird and it's, it's, I can't cut like a decent grade with it, then I can fix it. This is on the outside of the machine, so I can always easily get to this. And even if the machine's all put together, I can get in here and, and try to replace it. It would be a big job to try to fix this though. I mean, once I cut this plate out, you'd have to remove this whole frame, right? That holds the cylinder. And this is welded pretty much all the way around. So, I mean, we're talking a fair amount of work to get this out. And it's a lot of work that might not even be needed if this machine works okay. And I just don't know that until I try it. So this is the, the main spring that the, sit, the engine sits on. And there's 
this mount point here is all messed up. I don't know what happened exactly, but it's really just, this whole thing is bad. So I'm gonna have to fix that. That's, that's an easy fix though. I can just weld on that and redrill it. On to actually looking at the undercarriage stuff. So unfortunately on the D4, there's about 1500 different combinations of track chain, grouser, roller, sprocket. It's, it's, I was looking through the uh, parts manual and there's a, a ton of different combinations. I found two guides that are actually pretty helpful though. So I found this one. This one is like different, uh, different configurations and like what everything should be. And then this one um, is like, you can calculate how much wear there is and how much life is left. So that's, that's probably, I think both of these are gonna help me out a lot. I found them both on the Antique Caterpillar website. So first thing I did on the chain is I counted the number of links, which there's 32, and then I measured the bushing diameter, the outside diameter of the bushings, and then I compared it to this chart. So this is on the undercarriage components guide. So there's all these different D4s, and the D4NC, so this is 36 links, but it's a two inch bushing. It's the only two inch bushing in here, and the uh, actual pitch which is the distance between bushings is 675. So it is a 675 pitch, it's a two inch bushing. So, and then I looked in the actual parts, the parts book and all the 32, uh, 32 link chains were 4K is, is the, uh, so it's a 4K series of uh, links or 4K series of chain, I guess. So this is what all the dimensions should be. And I've kind of gone through here and yes, these are all correct. Uh, even though the number of links is not correct in here. So I mentioned earlier I had two inch uh, thick bushings. That's actually not quite completely accurate. I mean, if you look through here, so there's, there's different size bushings. Um, there's like, this is 224, there's 214, 201. And I think there's a three in here somewhere, but so 201 is the closest. I've kind of looked at several bushings for like the, the non-wear area to measure it. It's about like 195 or something like that. It's a little bit less than 201. So I'll just kind of use this as a guide and I'll measure the largest, the, the, the biggest distance versus the smallest distance on the bushing to kind of get my, I, uh, some kind of idea of external wear. Oh, that was easy. One incher on here. Oh man. All right. All right. I just want to clean this off. I mean, I can see a little bit of wear. I can see like a dip in here. We'll get in here in a second. Let me just get that. All right, that's better. Okay, so I can actually get into here now and measure this thing. So I think most of the wear is gonna be on this side and this side, and you can kind of see it worn in right there. So I think what I'm gonna do is measure from here to the bottom, across here, and then compare that to this measurement. Okay, so the largest number I measured here was 1.98, and the Smallest number I measured here was 1.94. So 40 thousandths off. Now if I compare it to this chart, which is the closest bushing size, that would be about 45 to 54% worn. Okay, so now to check the bushings, the internal wear on the bushings, what you do here is you take your pitch, which mine was 675, and you multiply that by four and that is 27 inches. So then you want to pull this chain tight, which I've already, I've, I've shoved this piece of wood in here to do that. And I've made sure it's, you know, the links are spread out as they're gonna go. And then you measure across uh, four. So you can measure on the grousers, but these grousers are all kind of weird. So I'm just measuring from the bushing to bushing. And I got, and this one is a little bit tilted, but I got, about 27 and just over a quarter. So I'm gonna check my wear chart here. 27.25, 27.3, 27.5, 27.6, 27.7, 27.8, 27.9, 27.8, 27.9, 27.9, 27.9, 27.9, 27.9, 27.9, 27.9, 27.9, 27.9, 
it's like 50 to 60 percent worn so yeah that's pretty consistent with the outer wear on the bushings so that's a good sign now you're probably noticing that the bottom of these bushings are all worn so i went around and they're they are not rubbing anywhere on the rollers so i think what happened is this this chain was on here and their rollers ran out and they replaced the rollers and they just kept the chain which is fine there's no problem with that but it's not actually rubbing anywhere okay last thing to measure is the rail height so i'm just going to stick this in here and we are at three and nine sixteenths right about so this is for the 5K, which the depth is the same for the 4K size links. And we're at like 3.56. So it's around maybe let's say 40% worn. Uh, that's kind of consistent with everything else on this chain. So I think this chain's gonna be fine for me. Um, the grouser height, I mean, this is kind of like, I, I think these grouser heights are fine. They're, what is this? I mean, it's like what, an inch? A little bit more than an inch, that's fine. So I think for chains and grouses, we're okay. So the top roller on this side, this is where it starts getting a little more confusing. So if you notice this plug right here, this is like a newer style roller. It is nowhere in the D4 book. I don't know what these are off of, if they're off like a D4D. So this is basically an oil plug. And this is not, um, originally they had a grease fitting like this right here. But I think you just take the plug out and you put a normal, uh, engine oil in there. I'll ha I don't, I'm not 100% sure. Also, all the bottom rollers have been replaced with that same style of uh, oil plug. I believe originally they had a, had that same plug that's over on the front idler. And um, it's really hard to measure these now because like I said, this whole cover is welded in place. You can kind of see, like right here, it's welded. And I'm guessing, I mean, like I said, my guess is that it's that they did that to keep these things from getting torn off while they're being used. So I can reach my fingers in here and feel there's a fair amount of, uh, let me see if I can, all right, I'm actually under the machine right now, since this is like the only good spot where you can feel the roller to the uh, bushing distance. First, let me just say, someone did not want this cover to ever ever come off i mean we have welded bolts in right here and this this whole thing is welded pretty much wherever it could be i can see it just i can see welds all the way up along this line so uh this thing is not going to want to come <laughs> come off easily but anyway i can feel the distance here between the bottom of the roller and the top of the bushing and it's about like that maybe so about three quarters of an inch uh, almost to my first knuckle on this finger. So I think that's fine. I'm really just not going to worry about it. This is, this is, would be an insane amount of work to get in here. And I, these rollers have obviously been replaced at some point recently. So I think everything's going to be fine here. So this is the right side roller. This is, looks like an older one. And it has this button cap fitting on it. A much smaller roller too, by the way. I can't really find a measurement for what it should be, but I can feel, so like this surface right here is probably like pretty unworn and I can feel a lip that comes out, but it's very, very minor. Same thing in the back. So I think this, this roller is gonna be fine. I'll just replace this fitting and put a new one in and then re-grease it. And we'll talk about the grease stuff a little bit later. Same story here. I don't know what this measurement's supposed to be. Uh, I'm sure I could find it, but just, I mean, just going off the feel of this thing, it's, uh, there's hardly any, I mean, it's, there's a lip, but it's, it's about the same as the other one. It's not that bad. On the sprockets, I did find a number on the sprocket uh, on, on this outside diameter, and I looked in here, and it was this number, where was that? 5H9107, so this, and you can see the welding here. So this is a weld on sprocket. You look at the teeth, and they actually look fairly decent. Uh, Pretty good. I mean, without a without like a gauge that I can put in here, I don't really know for sure. But I mean, they're nice and rounded. I, I the only other thing you can do is you can measure from tip to tip, but I can't do that with the sprocket on the machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and say these are fine. I mean, they look, in my opinion, pretty good. If I can get better view in here. So on a good spring, the distance from spring bottom to spring bottom is supposed to be 18 and a quarter. 18 and a half 
This one's 17 and a half. You see here, these two coils are touching, so this spring is definitely bad, which is why I got another one. I also noticed up on the front idler, they have these blocks on either side. This is about an inch. Um, maybe they put that in to take up the slack. I'm not quite sure. Um, and then you also see like there's bushings in here and this thing's lifted. I mean, this track is, well, before I put that, that block in it, this track was basically loose. It was riding on here. So there's a little bit of, gro of a groove in here since they were running the machine with the broken spring. And it's kind of hard to relate this, but on this threaded, threaded uh, rod in here, it's, it's tilted. So I might find more stuff when I get this out of here that's wrong with it. All right, I'm gonna take these, these shims out because this is just gonna add more tension on the system. So if I get these out, there should be a lot more room to work with. Well, over on this side, someone's already removed this bolt for me, so that was nice of them. That's not too bad. Ah. All right. So this thing should be pretty dang loose. And you can see over here, by the way, there's just it's been rubbing up against the spring mount here and just chewing itself up. It's not, I mean, it's not catastrophic. So I've seen like a few instances on like videos or online where this is like a split nut on here to tension the front idler against the spring. And um, apparently, I don't know if it comes loose or whatever, but these, the inside threads on this nut get stripped out and then it doesn't hold tension anymore. So what I was thinking is I take these nuts and I just put one, well, I don't, I'm not gonna put one on the other side because I'm not taking that one apart, but um, I just put it on here in between and then I can, once it's all you know adjusted and tight, then I can just run this nut up against here and hold it in place. We'll see how that works. It's kind of hard to get the camera in here, but I'm gonna take these spring, I don't know what you call these, guides out. So there's two bolts back here and then this just bar runs through this hole right here. So there's one on each side. I'm gonna take those out real quick. It is not moving. Oh, oh that was, I think that got it. Oh, dog. I ain't gonna lie, this was a lot of work to get this one bolt out. Fortunately, there's only three other, three left. These bolts are so rounded off and destroyed, I cannot get a socket on some of these. That's not good. Try this. This bolt's pretty well rounded off, so I think I'm gonna to try to get this out of here so I have more room to work in there. This is probably also gonna be stuck. I got a box wrench on the other side. Okay, I can't get any of these bolts out easily. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this threaded rod right here, which connects to the spring with my torch. That way I can just pull this whole thing out and then I can get in here and get these spring guide bolts out that are all rounded off and jacked up. I think this, now that I've thought about it, this is a way better idea. Because I'm gonna get this on the bench anyways. I'm gonna probably have to cut these bolts out or at least press them out. They are just so stuck on there. All right, well, I was taking a closer look at this and I noticed an issue here. 
not so much here or here, but in this area. This thing is just bent all the heck um, really badly. Both sides, this is actually two pieces. Each one of these is a separate piece, but both of them are pretty well destroyed. I'm not sure about this uh, tensioner nut yet. So there's no reason to panic yet. I got it sitting in here right now. Um, I called up the owner of General Gear and I, I ordered another one. That's not a big deal. I, I mentioned offhand about the spacers that were in here. And this is an inch and a half spacer. And he said there's two things that, well, in his mind, here was two things he was worried about. One is since, like, as I mentioned before, there's so many different options on the D4 undercarriage. He was wondering this could be an arm for a smaller idler wheel. And uh, so I checked the part number on the idler, wheeler, uh, the idler wheel and the, the arm, and they match the other side, which doesn't have spacers. And it, it fits on here without the spacer, as you can see. The other thing he was saying is people would sometimes do this when the chain got too worn out and you know stretched apart. They would put a spacer here. Um, but I've already measured the chain. And I, don't think it's, I don't think that's the problem. So my guess on what happened here is I think a long time ago this spring broke and they took it out. I think they took it out because all these bolts are just rounded off and stripped horribly. The other side is not like that. Um, and they took it out and they, maybe they were figuring they were going to replace the spring or whatever and they, they couldn't figure out how to do it. So what they did is because these two coils were touching, the entire spring was not in tension. There's a nut right over here on this side and they tightened it down because the overall length was like 17 and a quarter and it's supposed to be 18 and a half. So there's about your inch and a half right there. So they tightened it down, which makes, is gonna make the whole spring pack a lot stiffer when you do that. The internal spring's not broken and this one's now missing a coil. So that's gonna make everything way tighter. And then to pick up that slack, they put the spacer up here. Now the problem with doing that, I think is that makes, since it's so stiff, this is why this is so bent up is it's way harder on this arm to uh, compensate for that. That's my guess. I don't know. I guess if you have a better uh, theory, let me know. But that's, that's kind of what I'm thinking. We'll see. General Gear quoted me $240 for both of these arms. These are two separate pieces. And then I asked about the adjusting nut. He said 50 bucks. So I'm going to see if I can salvage this thing. I also need to get this off of here. Um, like you just, this is what I was dealing with right here. This is like almost round. Yeah, I just rounded it off even more. Looks like there's remnants of old locking tabs on here that no one ever hammered back on. We wouldn't want it to come loose, so that's good. Nope. I bet you this is gonna be stuck in here too. Oh, that's right, that one's spinning. Man, that thing does not want to come out of there. Not budging. Oh, it moved. It moved. This thing's rotating. Maybe that's a good sign. Well, I ain't gonna lie. This thing is fighting me. All right, Let's see if I can get lucky here. No. Oh. This one right over on this side is, yeah, it's kind of loosening up maybe. Oh yeah, that's the trick. So, these threads right here look pretty bad, which is not a good sign for what it's gonna look like inside. Okay, let's do a little compare and contrast here. This thing was full from here all the way down to here with just the hardest pack clay ever. So it took a long time to clean that out. It is clean though. So let's take a look at the threads. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this, uh, but basically there that like that side right there. I think is the worst. Let's see There is Okay, it's gonna get a good shadow on here Maybe there yeah, and then here It's that one's pretty flattened out too 
Um, also, I see right here, that's a problem right there. So that's gonna prevent it from clamping all the way. That's easy to fix though, obviously. This would probably work. But, and then here's the, here's the rod. So you can see what the threads look like on the rod. They're, uh, I mean, they're pretty torn up. So here's the new, and let me do a uh, face toward enemy. Since they shipped this to me under full compression, this is how much it's supposed to be compressed before it goes in the machine. I mean, this all looks in great shape. I'm not too worried about it shooting off and killing me, but better safe than sorry. But you look at these threads right here. You could set your watch to these threads. They're just perfect. So, I don't know. What I'm thinking is it's, it's like almost a crime to use something this boogered up on threads like this because it's just going to tear them up. And, uh, you know, they're not making any more of these. So I was just looking on eBay and I found for $18, I actually found a tap that's this correct thread, which is one and three eighths by six. And, oh, hello, okay, yep. And uh, I think what I can do is I can clamp this after I fix, uh, where is that? This indent right here. I'm gonna clamp this back down. I'll run the tap through here. Now the tap's gonna immediately break off and snap in there. So then at that point, I'll just throw this whole thing in the garbage and I'll spend $50 and get another nut. Another change of plan, since just all of these bolts are just destroyed and completely frozen. So what I think what I'm gonna do is come through and cut some of these coils out. And if I can remove a few of these, like cut here and here, then I can get that inside spring, get those, all the tension out. Then I can come over here and cut these bolts off. And then I should be able to lift it out in two sections and pull it off of these guides on each side and then I can worry about the guides later but it's just it's just I'm wasting time on this now I think that was pretty uneventful I was actually I was putting trying to put stuff here just because I was more worried about it popping and then shooting hot slag right in the old money maker here so that's why I had I was kind of ducking down back back here and doing it blind it took a little bit while I'm just going to cut chunks of it out and then I'm going to cut like, I'm just gonna have to remove it in pieces. Here it is. All right, it's pretty, uh, it was pretty rough cutting through these because there's a spring underneath, so all the slag was like blowing back out. That's kind of why I didn't film it very well. But anyway, um, I'm gonna try to get these springs cut. There's still, uh, this spring is still compressed, so there might be a little bit of movement after I do that. I was not expecting it to be this thick in here. I was hoping just for a, a long rod, but this is like completely filling in the radius of this inner spring. It's gonna be really hard to cut this probably. I guess Yeah, there's just no way I'm gonna get in there without cutting everything out, which will take forever. I think now I've been kind of reassessing. I'm gonna come over here and just cut these little ears off. I think that's probably what I should have done before. Then I should be able to slide the whole spring out. All right, that side's off. I think this is the last bolt right here gotta be a little bit careful because i think some earlier some hydraulic fluid had gone down had fallen on the track and gone down so i'll keep an eye on that i'll just keep i'll get the fire extinguisher out oh there's a i see a crack forming right there that's a good sign i don't know if you can see that or not Still very hot. Oh my gosh. All right. I got the, these are the rings. And I'm gonna vacuum all the slag and dirt out of here and we'll take a look. Pretty rusty in here. Rollers look pretty good though. Um, so yeah, like I said, I'm not gonna worry about those. And uh, yeah, it's just, uh, really rusty in here. So the last thing I got to do here 
is I got to take these guides out on each side and that this, this is the whole issue is I couldn't get the bolts off of them. I got one bolt off, but they're all just so rounded from whoever took them off last time did not replace them and they're, they were completely rounded off. I mean, you can see all these, like this roller, these are all rounded off. So, uh, you know, just any other fixes on this undercarriage that I would ever end up having to do are just gonna be not fun. So on here, my original plan to cut all the way through, that fell apart, and now that I think about it, it was a lot better idea to just cut the ears off so to get them off those guides. Didn't waste too much time. Either way, I would have wanted to cut this inside spring. I, I wouldn't want any tension on this thing while I'm hitting on it or heating it up. So it's completely rendered uh, non-damaging. Let's see if we can see where the, this is the uh, broken coil. Let's see if we can find out where it broke. Oh yeah, oh my gosh, look at that. That's where it broke. And that just completely tore, amazing. All right, well I think I'm gonna end the video there. Um, next video is gonna be getting that spring back in, getting the new idler arms, I ordered those today, those are coming in. Fixing that nut, putting that spring in. I also have to come in here and get these guides out. So I'll probably just weld the nut to the top hopefully, and, and I don't know, it's gonna be rough. I'm sure that's not gonna be fun. A lot of compromises that I had to make here on the uh, undercarriage. And you know, if I had any advice for, for uh, people that would wanna do a project, I guess don't worry about the engine and transmission or you know any of that stuff. Only worry about the undercarriage because as soon as you start getting into the undercarriage, it's a lot less fun getting this rusted stuff out and the parts are a lot more expensive. The, it just exponentially increases on all your parts. So fortunately, maybe I lucked out a little bit and, and uh, this will last me for as long as I need it. But you know, if I ever have to get in and replace a roller, we're talking a lot of work because we're cutting welds, we're taking these old panels off with just rusted in bolts and it's just a mess. But uh, you know, based on my measurements, I think I'm not too worried about the undercarriage unless other stuff starts breaking. Um, the biggest concern I have is obviously gonna be this uh, blade frame that's all tweaked over and welded. And I, I don't think that's gonna affect how, if it tracks straight, but it's gonna affect if the blade is sitting level with the tracks. And if it's tilted, then that's gonna be a huge problem and I'm gonna have to fix it at that point. Oh, also a few people were asking about the updated price wall. So really the only expenses I've added recently are the idler arms and then all the stuff to rebuild the shifter, which was about 65 bucks, maybe a little bit less. And then I added another hundred on for fasteners. I already had 200 for fasteners over there, but um, I've kind of been slacking on the fastener. And so I just go to the hardware store and get like two or three bolts at a time instead of ordering in bulk. And that's, starting to, to bite into me. So the new total here is fif about 57.85. Still under 6,000, not too bad. And uh, just, you can pause it there if you wanna look at it. Also been flooding in here throughout the week. It's been raining really hard outside. No big deal, nothing's really touching. But uh, anyways guys, thanks a lot for watching and I'll be back soon hopefully with part two of only two for the undercarriage unless I find something else really wrong. And after that, I think we're either waiting for good painting weather or we're gonna be doing something else, which is gonna be either the winch which, or the radiator. Those are two, kind of the two last big things that I need to look at before this can all go back together and, and get uh, working again. So thanks a lot guys and I'll be back soon.